Hello, Keith Rucker here at businessmachinery.org. Guys, today we're back working on the metal planer and the task for the day is we're gonna be getting our saddle reinstalled onto the cross, cross rail. And there's a lot going on with this part. Uh, it's got more than just hanging on here. There's actually some rods that go through here that turn and do different things. One moves it left to right. One allows uh, the clapper box to move up and down uh, depending on how you have it geared over here. We've gotta get all this stuff put back together and working properly. So I'm gonna zoom you in here, show you what we got that we're starting with and let's get started on this project. Before I get too deep in this, I want to show you uh, what we got here. This is the saddle, and uh, in previous videos, I've gone in and we've rescraped this to get it where it's, everything's nice and the surfaces are, are flat and true. We've also rescraped the cross rail, so everything is uh, going to be running good here. This is the back side of the, the saddle, and there are some things going on here that you really can't see from the front. So before I put it back on there, I want you to see how this is going to work. So, like I said, there are two rods that go through these little holes right here that do two different things. One of them is a lead screw and it moves the, the whole uh, saddle and clapper box left to right on this rail. The other one is a smaller shaft. It's just a, it's not uh, threaded, it's just got a key on it, but this spins and it spins a gear that actually transfers over into the clapper box assembly that will allow that clapper box head to move up and down. So I wanted you to see how this all goes together. There is this uh, piece here. This is the, the nut for the lead screw that goes in here. And it's kind of interesting. They've got a slot in here. It's a dovetailed slot. We got a dovetail on the bottom and this actually just slides right in the end here. Let me get it in there. There it goes. There is a uh, dovetail piece here that kind of just goes in behind that and holds it in place. I'm not going to put it in. I have to actually assemble this with it on here, but I want you to see this. And there's a screw on the end uh, that kind of comes in here and tightens that up. Uh, interestingly, the screw has got a patent date on it. I don't know if you can read that, but it says patented April what is that, 21st, 85, that's 1885. Um, and this is the newest patent date on this. I found two patent dates. One of them is 1893, one is 1895, or excuse me, 1883 and 1885. Uh, and I, based on this number, I know that it was made after 1885. Uh, and then based on some catalog evidence and what have you, I think it was made before about 1895, 1898, somewhere in there. So it gives us about a roughly a 10 year period uh, that the machine was made in. Other piece that's kind of on this backside is this gear. Uh, it kind of fits in right here. There's a hole that that index is in and there's a screw that comes to the other side that tightens it up. And there's a rod that goes through there. Again, you have a key in that bevel gear. Uh, and as the rod turns, the bevel gear turns and that will engage into a bevel gear that comes out from, again, the clapper box and that will allow it to move up and down. Now these pieces, I can't put on. I have to actually put them on on the machine, but I wanted you to see this. Uh, the other thing that's going on this backside, it's got this square hole. We made uh, new T-nuts that hold the clapper box assembly on and, and they go in like this, but you see that square hole. It just gives us access to get in there for that T-nut uh, to be captured on the inside. So, and again, I'll have to put those in um, as probably before I put this on, I'll put those in. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing hanging on there and start putting it together. So let's uh, get this up and turned around. This is the, the front side. And the first thing I want to do is put my T-nuts through here. Go ahead and get those in there. There's two of these. And again, these will be used later on to uh, attach the clapper box onto the front. But they need to be in there because you can't get them in uh, once this goes on. And I'll tell you what, before I do anything, I want to just kind of put a little bit of whey oil on this. We'll take a rag here and just kind of smear some of this on here. Whey oil is a lubricant for 
putting on ways. It has a something in it that kind of makes it thick and uh, makes it kind of stick to that surface so it doesn't run off as bad as uh, just regular oil. There's a dovetail down here. I want to make sure I have some oil in there as well. And while I'm at it, I think I'm going to just go ahead and oil in here as well. All right. This is ready to put back on here. Now I have two gibs that will tighten this in place that go on here. And uh, let's see, this gib here goes on the top. I'm gonna kind of lift that up a little bit. Here we go. Slide that one in. And there's also a gib that goes on the back side of this. Note that I did scrape the gibs in. Uh, I did that off camera and just did it on the surface plate, checked to make sure that we were getting good contact on these. Uh, in the case of the Gibbs, you scrape the Gibb and not the machine part because the Gibbs was actually running in there. And with that, I can go ahead, put these screws in. This is not a tapered Gibb like you see on a lot of machines. There's just some screws that are used to put pressure on that Gibb. There's four screws on the top to tighten up that top gib. And there's three screws on the back to tighten that back gib. And there's also some set screws in here. And there's some little holes in the top of that back gib. And these set screws just go in there and capture those and keep that from moving, um, sliding out basically. It just, it just, they're just capturing that piece in place. Uh, there's also some uh, screws, holes that these go down into and engage in for that top gib that uh, keep it from sliding out. And as far as adjusting the gibs, what I'll do is I'll uh, tighten these up to where they're just tight enough that we don't have any movement, any play in here, but it's just loose enough that it will slide back and forth. And um, there's a little bit of back and forth with that. So let me get this uh, all adjusted and we'll be right back. Done some adjusting here and this slides back and forth very nicely. It's, it's tight, but it's loose enough that it'll slide. That's exactly what we want. And because of our scraping job, everything's parallel. Everything's the same thickness, the same width. So it's not binding up anywhere on here. Uh, if it, we get differences in those measurements. So we did a good job at our scraping, which is good. And uh, this piece is in place. So next, uh, we need to start putting these pieces behind it. I do have access that I can reach in here and uh, get those in place. So uh, I'm gonna start with uh, this bevel gear. And again, it just kind of fits in here. There's a little hole in there that that piece mounts go, fits down into there we go and we have a screw that comes in the front here it's engaged there and we should be able to just tighten that up and that will put that in place and that is will clear from one end to the other there's a little, little bracket there but it's got plenty of clearance behind it so next I'm gonna put this little uh, lead screw in here. I did just put a little bit of oil on this. Um, it does a couple of things. Number one, it helps slide in there, but it also kind of gives it some rust prevention. And there's a dovetail slide right there. There it goes. It slides all the way back and then uh, this is a little dovetail piece here, fits in there as well. Let me put a little oil on that. That slides in. Take a little dead blow hammer and just kind of 
tap that in place. And then we have this big screw on the front here. And we'll put a little dab oil on that as well. It goes in place and that just locks that in. And I may have to go get a bigger screwdriver for this. Let's see if I can get it to go with this little bitty one. It's actually a big screwdriver, but it's not big enough. Actually, that's gonna work. So now that gear, or not gear, but that screw is uh, locked in back there. And I'm gonna put a little oil in there as well. Up next, we have our lead screw. It fits through the end here. Good. And save time here, I'm just going to use my impact driver. There we go. Now we have a uh, rod here that goes into that bevel gear. This one is just keyed, so it slides in this top hole. And again, let me uh, go ahead and Put a little oil on this. I'm gonna put some oil up in that gear. <laughs> Gotta line the key up. There it goes. that's clear. There was a little bit of paint in there that was uh, making it tight. And that turns that nicely. Okay, let's uh, put the ends on the end down here so they stay captured. So there's a collar that goes up on here. Then we have a nut that goes on this bottom one. And, ah, my socket's not gonna be long enough. Let me go see if I can get a wrench. Well, I don't have an inch and three eighths wrench. Second time I've needed one in a week, so I guess I need to acquire one of those. That's be on my list to find one. Let's uh, get this tightened up. We'll just use the adjustable wrench. And it looks like I'm gonna need another wrench to keep that from turning. All right, as we get down close, what I wanna do is I wanna get this tight enough that I take the backlash out, but not so tight that I can't turn it. That's a little bit stiff. I'm gonna back it off just a touch. That turns good. I don't know, maybe just a touch. I'm trying to get as much of that backlash out as I can. I think that feels good. Now that everything's tight, you'll notice that when we turn this screw, it's moving the saddle left to right, and uh, that's turning fairly easily. It's just loose enough that it moves nicely, but it's just tight enough that we take the backlash out, so that one's good. Let's uh, get this one up here done. It's a little bit different than the bottom one. For this um, top rail here, we've just got a piece that fits over there. There is a tapered pin that fits in there and holds that in place. I'll take my hammer and that's locked in place and turns nice and good. 
So you can see that turns that bevel gear, it's keyed in there and it just slides on that shaft as the uh, saddle moves back and forth, uh, it just moves on that keyed shaft. So anyway, I think we got all that put back together. Next up here, I wanna start putting together the mechanism that drives this feed for the cross slide and the up and down uh, that we've been working on assembling here. And I've previously taken it apart, got everything cleaned up, and it's ready to go back together. And the first part I wanna do is, is start reassembling this, and I didn't show it coming apart. It was all rusted up in pretty rough shape, but I've uh, cleaned it up. I think we got everything we need. There's a little um, ratchet pawl here that goes down uh, into this little cavity like such. And I'll show you how this works in a minute. There's a spring that goes on here that kind of lets this thing spring up and down. Now, this was the original spring. It was worn completely out and rusted uh, apart. I dug around in my toolbox and I found this spring here. I think it's gonna work. It might be a little bit light, but I'm gonna give it a try. If, if I have to, I can always take this apart and uh, get a heavier spring to go in there. But that uh, just fits down in this little hole. That spring goes in there. And again, you can feel the spring pressure on it. Now, there are a couple of holes up here in the top, and that is for a pin, two pins. And again, here are the old ones. Uh, they were all rusted up. I measured them and ordered me some dowel pins that um, are the right size to go in here. This pin here allows it to either be in a forward, reverse, or you can pull it up where it's disengaged. Um, let me get a little hammer. I need to tap that in a little bit tighter than that. I get a little stare at bench block here as a backer. And that should do the trick right there. Yeah, that spring is a little bit on the light side. I may see if I can find a, one that's a little stronger to put in there. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this. Next, there's this little brass uh, button that goes up on top. This just gives you something to kind of hold it with. And again, there's just a uh, pin that goes in here. And I'm gonna probably need to get a punch and punch that in there. Let me get a punch real quick. There we go. And that is reassembled. That was completely froze solid. Wouldn't move at all when I started. Um, I think I will put a little drop of oil down in there just to lubricate it, but I think it's gonna be fine. So next we need to start reassembling this shaft. So there's a gear here. Put a little drop of oil on this, lubricate this. this uh, turns on it, but this gear slides up on the shaft like such, and it rotates there. You can see this is turned down, and um, this piece drives up on the end. Let's see, it needs to drive down just a little bit. And there is a pin that goes in here that holds that in place. And let me get a punch to finish punching that in. And we'll finish this driving home with a punch. There we go. Just a tad more. That should do it. All right. And now this whole assembly fits up on this uh, bracket here. And again, let me uh, put some oil in here. So that's lubricated. That will turn in the shaft. I've got this gear on backwards. Let me turn that back around. Hopefully it'll come off this end, it will. Now let's uh, try this one more time. There we go. Now this little ratchet is designed where it should go up and down as this thing turns. 
that little paw should just click around or you come out it spins freely there it goes it catches in one direction or I can go the other direction and it will um, just kind of jump over those teeth but catch and move in the other direction all right now on this end we have another gear and it only goes on in one direction because of the hole that's there. And this end, and there is a tapered pin that drops down in this hole. That was too small. I was trying to see if I had a new one here. That one's a little bit too big. All right, let me, uh, this is the original one. It's got a little ding on the bottom. Let me go grind that off and polish that up and that should drop down in there. And that should drive right down in there. All right, that tapered pin is in place. And this is ready to go back on Next, I got a little assembly here that we need to put together, and this goes on the feed mechanism. There's some pins in here, and this basically adjusts how much of a stroke uh, you're getting to move your feed back and forth. So there's a little brass piece here, and this just fits over this, this little T-slot. And um, again, I'll tell you what, let me show you this. There's a pin, there's a spring load back in there, and you pull it out, and it just engages into one of these holes. So let me pull that up, get this to come over here. And I'm gonna to go to the very middle where there's actually not a hole. Put this linkage in here. I'm gonna put a little oil in there. This fits down over that. And then we have a little knob here to pull on. And there's a pin that lines up in there. Get that lined up good. Take my pin and put in there and hopefully that'll line up and drop right into place. Here we go, I think we got it. All right, so you can pull on this. It goes into a hole. And engages in there. I wanna double check, make sure there's not a spacer or something that goes in there. It looks like there could be, but uh, I think that's together right. Let me go look at my pictures. I did check and confirm in my photos that there is indeed no spacers or anything in this joint. It looked like there was an awful lot of room in there, but, and there is, but that's the way it was. So that's the way we're gonna put it back together. This is just held in place with a couple of uh, screws. Let me get this tightened up. This linkage will go up to a rack and move things up and down. And the way this works is, is when the table uh, goes back and forth, this piece down here will rock. There's a handle back here on the back. You can adjust how much of a stroke it has. And there's also another area here where you can put this in different pins, depending on where you're at. Uh, on one side or the other also goes forward and reverse. Uh, but there's a couple of different options for length of stroke here. So between the handle and which pin it is, you can control how much stroke you've got and that's gonna determine how far the cross slide moves uh, later on. So let's go ahead and continue in getting all this uh, stuff put in here and back together. So as this thing goes, it's basically providing an up and down motion. And that motion is transferred to this rack 
that rides on this guide here and it basically just moves up and down uh, with uh, this piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in. There's just a bolt here that connects the linkages like such. Drop oil in here, get some lubrication. And there we go. Need to mount this little bracket right here, which holds one of the, the two gears that I had to remake for this uh, machine. Let me get this put in place. Okay. Now we'll come in here with this, uh, whoops, there we go. This whole assembly that we had worked on a minute ago. And this gear back here engages the rack, as you can see. And as it moves up and down, it will turn the shaft. And of course, we got that ratchet mechanism going on in there that will turn this gear here. This gear here will then power over. So you can reverse this by just flipping that. So as it goes up and down, it's just gonna jog over a little bit at a time. So let me go ahead and tighten these bolts back up. Right here, we've got the gear that we made that meshes in here. And I put a little drop of oil on this bolt. It goes in here and this gear will just rotate on that shaft. There it goes. So finally, We've got this other second little gear here that goes on and off. You can determine which shaft you want to go on. Remember, there's two uh, rods here. One adjusts the clapper box up and down. The other one moves the saddle left and right. So depending on which uh, direction your feed is going, you put this gear on that feed rod. And it just slides up in place here like such. Or we can go down to the gear below it, get it on the key and slides right in place. So there you go, our feed works are back together again. Well, there we go, our saddle is assembled. Our feed mechanism, feed works are all back operational again. And we are making progress and checking another big check mark off the list here on getting this uh, planer restored. Uh, up next, really what's left to do, just to kind of give you an idea, I've got to redo the whole clapper box assembly here. Uh, that's going to be taken apart. Yes, there is going to be some scraping that has to be done in there. I've been getting some comments from folks that I'm turning into the scraping channel. Guys, I'm really not, but when I have scraping to do, that's what we do. And uh, we've got some more to do on this, and hopefully we'll be done with the scraping at that point in time. I also got to do some work up here on the top for the works that move the, the whole uh, cross slide up and down. I got a bevel gear that has to be made. Uh, one of them was bro had broken teeth in it, so that's coming up as a project. And uh, after that, we've got to get all the a motor mounted on here and all the, the belts and stuff assembled so that we can run it. But we are getting closer and closer and closer to cutting our first chips with this machine. Guys, with that, that will be a wrap. So as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and please leave comments and thumbs ups are appreciated. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.